Hey crew, I just wanted to reach out now that we're closing out the end of our summer. We're getting back from all of our vacations. We've learned a lot of fun gymnastics. We've done some new competitions. We've gained some friends. We've gotten tan, hopefully, uh, and we've sweated a lot. So I wanted to touch base as we segue back into fall, right? Um, so summer can kind of be a volatile time as we live our lives and enjoy ourselves outside of the gym, which is the whole point of what we're doing here. But now that school started back up, um, rhythms are kind of coming back into play. We're finding our routines. Um, so for those of you who may have gotten a little lost in that routine over the last couple weeks, I'm here to tell you that we're starting, uh, starting brand new. Fall phase starts next Tuesday, September 7th. And now's a perfect time to, to buckle back down and find yourself in the gym and create that routine. Some of the things that we're going to be trying to do is uh, encourage you through goal setting sessions. Um, so wait for some more information on, on formally setting some of those up so that we can help you as well. So if you're one of those people that struggles, um, unfortunately, I'm finding myself is uh, now going to be a 5.30 a.m.er. Um, and so I, I know if I register and I sign up um, and uh, I'm going to pick my partner and say, hey, if I'm not there, I need you to give me a little bit of shit. So um, this is going to kind of fall into play of our fall theme, which is hashtag better together. Um, I talked about that a little bit in the newsletter, but just what that looks like is um, one being better, um, whether that's that 1% gain um, in any facet of our lives. That's what we're trying to do here, right? Um, and then that together portion is um, realize that we're doing it as a group um, and how much easier it is to be better when someone is joining that journey right alongside of you. So if you're looking for that extra push, um, man, I promise you there's another person at the gym who also needs that from you. So um, as we enter fall better together um, as a group, as we all kind of join in finding our new rhythm, our new routines um, moving forward as a big group. So let's talk about fall phase, what we're going to do. Um, one of the things I want to address is when we program and how we look at that is it's not this short term. Yes, we do these six to eight week cycles, but in all honesty, we are programming to peak at the open. So the CrossFit Open is is our version of the Olympics, right? It's our Super Bowl. Um, and so when we do our phases as we go through, there's a very linear component of how that looks like so that we are peaking in February to perform our best. So with that, fall phase one is uh, going to kind of dial back to some of those really basic movements. We're going to build up lots of strength um, and we're going to uh, slowly transition that um, as we go out throughout the year. So it's going to look like you're used to. It's going to be a test week, um, six, seven weeks of, of workouts and then a retest week to see where we've gained. Um, but one of the things I want to mention is that we are going to introduce lifts that we see as transferable skills. Um, so I'll tell you that every Monday we're going to deadlift. And why do we deadlift? One, it's the most taxing on our central nervous system. It's going to have that biggest capacity to change us uh, internally. And then also in that transferable skill part, um, we want to make sure we're deadlifting in a way that's going to transfer to a big pull for a for a clean or a snatch or any of our Olympic lifts. So um, you'll notice coaches may be making adjustments to your deadlift that they haven't made in the past because there's a lot of safe ways to deadlift that don't transfer to that second and third pull of the clean or the snatch. So making sure we're pressing our feet through the ground, we're really loading those legs, have that upright chest for that final explosion. So if you're someone who tends to deadlift with your hips really high, um, we're going to see if we can't make some adjustments. And again, not because it's wrong or it's unsafe, but we think at the end of the line, uh, end of this year, if we kind of transition into that more upright leg driven motion, that's going to transfer better to the things that we see a lot more of, which is those clean snatches and, and things like that. Um, one of the other things is you're going to start to see standardized lifting days. Uh, so Mondays are going to be deadlifts pretty routinely next week throws us off because of the holiday uh, Tuesdays are going to be strict presses Wednesdays will typically be back squats Thursdays you're going to see a lot of interval conditioning days skill work um, and then Fridays we'll come back with our with our actual cleans um, and working really high technique there um, and so I know that it may feel repetitive um, and one of the things I want to clarify is varied does not mean random 
Um, so yes, we do want to be constantly varied. And with that, we won't be doing the same exact lift um, in the sets, in the reps, in the percentages week after week after week. Um, we're also going to be varied in the long term. So over the full calendar year, um, this will most likely be the only cycle where we have a deadlift or um, this version of the clean. So um, we do need to have that linear um, period periodized uh, lifting where we are progressing in really specific manners. Um, but it is still varied, but it's not random. So we want to make sure we're growing in a capacity that is scientific and proven and measurable. Um, and again, that's what the, the cycle start test and the end test is, is there to be, is there to be measurable. The other thing we're adding um, is we will have optional skill work. So most of the time we will not do that in class. Thursday may be a time where we have extra time to do some skill work or it'll be more a part of the workout. Um, but we're going to input that every day, um, and that is not really meant to be done in class. That's for those of you who want that extra time um, to do some more skills. Um, so if you're really looking to be competitive or you are seeing that um, we probably aren't going to handstand walk in class very often because that doesn't meet the general physical preparedness for most of our people. So um, handstand walking may show up in those optional skills. So when can you do that optional skill work? Anytime there's a coach in the gym. So if you are in the 6.30 a.m. class, show up 15, 20 minutes early, get your skill work in. Uh, if you're at the 4.30 p.m. class, do your workout and stay into the 5.30 p.m., get your optional skill work in um, after class. So we've got that um, the alcove set up. You can get almost anything you need done over there. The one thing I will ask of you is, um, Please don't ask your coaches to stay late just for you. Uh, we need to make sure we're respecting their time um, in the gym as well. Uh, if we find that there's a lot of people wanting an extra 15, 20 minutes, we'll figure out a way to make sure there's a coach in the building for you. But for right now, if there's a class going on, um, we're going to have some optional skill work programmed for you. Um, as always, you can do whatever you'd like in that time, but we just want to kind of give you a head start um, and a way to go. And then lastly, I've um, been getting some questions about the new FCF endurance class. Um, what that looks like, it is meant to be, I don't want to call it a flesh day, it is meant to be a workout. Um, they are going to be much longer time domains from that 30 to 45 minutes long, and, but it is meant to be a constant state of moving um, where you are scaled down. So this is meant to um, if, be a cross training day for runners and bikers. So if you have friends, um, we can have a separate membership just for those endurance classes that are looking to get in off the streets um, for some workouts. Or if you're just looking to build your engine a little bit more um, in those longer time domains, it's going to be a perfect opportunity to come into our endurance classes. I will also say that if done correctly and safely and performed well, um, there's no reason you can't do a CrossFit class and an endurance class uh, on the same day. Talk to your coach about that. We want to make sure we're adding um, our capacity in a smart, safe, healthy way. Um, but with any type of cardio or endurance training, we're meant to be done at a low heart rate. We're meant to be at a very low technical ability of skill. Um, so uh, if you're working hard, um, I've found in the past that if I come in and do 40 minutes of endurance work without a lot of pounding on my body, I will actually feel better the next day than if I had done less work. So um, Feel free to try those out. Again, if you have friends, I'd love to throw them a free trial session um, for those endurance classes so you'll have someone to work out with too. Um, but those are available to anyone with a CrossFit membership. Um, so if, if it's an un unlimited membership, this is part of your package in that class. So be on the lookout for those. Those will also start next Tuesday. They'll be every Tuesday and Thursday night at 6.30 p.m., so right after class. And with that, since there will be a coach in the building, that's a perfect time for you to come in and get some extra work in that alcove sp uh, space as well. So that's what fall looks like. Like I said, um, if you're one of those people who have seen summer kind of tail off, uh, Tuesday is a perfect day to restart, get re-engaged, and find your new routine at the gym. Um, four or five times a week, we would love to see you, and that's where we think we get the most benefit from as well. All right, Fountain City, love you. Happy to be a happy just to be a part of of this group, and looking forward to.
great things in the future. All right, we'll see you on Tuesday.